Hello, class. <clears throat> okay, my microphone is definitely working. <laughs> uh, what I wanted to do is do the, the second lecture in the series for um, the light rail analysis. That's what we're, we're doing. So I've drawn a couple things over here too. We're gonna to do an energy analysis. And this is for the light rail system in Alberta, Canada. And I, I looked at uh, light rail and basically they're saying that nowadays it's uh, uh, 30,000 uh, kilograms is usually what one single car in a light rail system is. And so I wanted to design this maybe for, you know, a futuristic light rail system. I, I'm not exactly sure the, the Alberta system is brand new cars and I'm assuming because, you know, if you think about it, let's say that we, we say there's about 50 people in a railroad, in, in a car, light rail car, whether it's a green line or whatever. So we got 50 people, maybe 100 kilograms per person. That's only 5,000 kilograms, right? So the, the, the weight of the vehicle is a lot more than the weight of the people that are in the vehicle. So I'm saying in the future, maybe we have car, you know, train cars that are made with light materials and we still have 50 people in them all together. That one train car, I'll put car here because we're going to make one for each car, uh, is 20,000 kilograms. So that's what I want to look at as far as the uh, energy goes. Now we're going to start here. We've, we've got, I'm going to draw the, the thing that we're going to do. We are going to start here and we've got zero, V equals zero. Right, V equals zero meters per second there. Then we're going to go down this 200 meter long d d uh, decline, or uh, what would you call it? Yeah, d I guess decline or incline. Incline would be going up though, wouldn't it? <laughs> anyway, we're, we're going down 200 meters. We're gonna get to the bottom. At the bottom at point two, uh, we want to be going 20 meters per second. So we're going zero meters per second here, but down here at the bottom at point two. So at, you know, really down in that, that area. As we get down into, let's use another color. Let's use, uh, let's use, we can use orange. Uh, as we're going down here, right, we, we're going to try to maintain it at 20 meters per second anyway. And you know, what is 20 meters per second? That's about 45 miles an hour, isn't it? 20 meters per second. So we're going to try to keep it at about 45 miles an hour as we're going on this incline. This is really just a light rail train that's, uh, you know, not stopping at any of the stations, but it's going to slow down at a couple of the stations. So it's going to get down here and at point two. So let's write that down, at two, it's going 20 meters per second equals V. All right, so let's, that's the first thing that we wanna look at. So at two, it's going 20 meters per second. When it gets to three, so at three, 20 meters per second. At four, I want it to be going 20 meters per second, right? So during these things, it's gonna be going 20 meters per second. But at A and B, right? At A and B, we're going through two stations. So we can never get less than three meters per second on the train as it's traveling even through the seconds, even through the, the station. So the slowest, so V always has to be greater or equal to three meters per second. Whether we have to take that out of the kinetic energy of the, of the train or whether we have to, uh, you know, do whatever, we've, we've got to do it. So. What we know about the uh, energy that we've got here is we know that the uh, potential energy that we've got here is going to be quite a bit, 
right? Because at point one, we've got quite a bit of potential energy. What's our velocity? Zero. So we know that our kinetic energy is going to be zero joules. How about the rotational energy? There's nothing in the flywheel at all, is there? There's nothing in the flywheel when we first start off at point one. So it's going to be zero joules there too, isn't it? So all of the energy is gonna be contained for the 20,000 kilogram train. It's gonna be contained in the potential energy. Let's do that. Let's go to point one. And let's find out what the potential energy at point one is because that's going to decide a lot uh, for the rest of this trip that we're making, isn't it? We'll find out that going by A and going by B, we will be at the minimum speeds, so we don't have to worry. But when we get by C, we'll actually be going quite fast. <laughs> and then at point five, I, I, uh, I forgot that. So at, at four, at three, uh, at five, 20 meters per second. So we want to keep it, we want to keep it to 45 miles per hour at all if we can. Or, you know, less. You know, keep it to 45 miles per hour or less. Uh, but down here at point C, we're going to be going probably, uh, you know, no, we could, we could still, I mean, we're keeping it to, to, to 20 meters uh, per second there. Okay, everything else looks pretty good. So let's do the potential energy at point one. We know that it's going to be mgh, right? So I've got 20,000 kilograms. And that includes the 1,000 kil 1, kilogram of the flywheel, or the 992 kilograms that the flywheel is making up. That's all included in the 20,000 kilograms. And in fact, we really should have used maybe even a larger value than this. But I want to, to keep this uh, you know, relatively low, light rail of the future. Uh, hopefully, the cars will be lighter and lighter and lighter and made out of composite materials so that this 20,000 kilograms, when someone looks at this in the future, they'll say, God, that's heavy. Right? That's what I want them to say. <laughs> uh, but uh, who knows? And then H, H is just going to be 200 meters. That's not very high, is it? Right, that's like 600 feet. So we're starting off at a thing 600 feet. And what we're going to see is that we're going to get up to high speeds and everything else. And we're going to store a lot of energy uh, and then still uh, have a lot of energy left over when we get to five. Not enough energy probably to climb the hill. And of course, we're looking at 100% efficiency in energy transmission between the various different storage environments, whether it's KE, PE, or RE, right? So uh, let's just figure this out. So PE1 is going to be, and I've already figured this out, but I like to do it again anyway. So 20,000 kilograms times 9.81 meters per second squared times 200 meters high gives me 39.24 uh, times 10 to the 6. And that's exactly 39.24 times 10 to the 6. And what are those? Joules. Right, it's potential energy. So why don't we write that in here? We'll write 39.24. 2 times 10 to the 6. And I'm going to use my disjoiner up here and say that these are in joules, so I don't have to write down joules all the time. All right, that would be hard anyway, because I made the, the thing, you know, the small little thing in that corner there. So anyway, we've got that. Now, uh, we know how high that is and everything else. Now, what I want to do is when we get down to the bottom at point 2, we've got to be going 20 meters per second. So I'm going to put a line underneath this because this is our analysis at one, isn't it? Now let's do our analysis at two because at two, I told uh, everybody that we were going one, uh, um, 20 meters per second. So one half m uh, v squared, right? And that's going to be one half times 20,000 kilograms 
times my velocity, which is 20 meters per second squared. So we know that we have to have that much energy in the movement uh, uh, of the train, right? So 20 squared times 20,000 times one half is, let me get this right, 4 million. So let's put that down. So we know our kinetic energy is going to be four times 10 to the six joules. These are all joules. There you go. I wrote joules there, but I'm not gonna write it anywhere else. So how much does that leave us? Well, doesn't that mean that in the um, uh, flywheel, we're gonna have to have a lot of, of, of energy stored in the flywheel? Let's do that. So. So we know that our potential energy now, because we're at the bottom, right? So this is zero and this is 200 meters. So we're at the very bottom now of our well of potential energy. So our potential energy is going to be zero. This is going to be four times 10 to the six, and this is gonna be 35.2 times 10 to the six. Does everyone see how I've, I, you know, we have conservation of energy. There's two conservation things. Conservation of energy, which we're looking at now. And we also have, and this is what we're gonna look at in uh, a lecture, I think uh, right after this, right after I finish this concept, this uh, topic, is conservation of momentum. Right, conservation of energy and conservation of momentum. No, momentum. Sometimes it gets away from me. All right, so uh, there you go. We uh, now have the kinetic energy. We've got the second part of our table filled out, but you know, it tells us, we know what the velocity is here. We know what the uh, uh, height above the datum plane is here. But what don't we know about this? You know, when we're looking at energy for rotational energy, what is rotational energy? Isn't rotational energy I omega squared over two? Isn't that what rotational energy is? One half I omega squared? Right. So one half I omega squared is our rotational energy and we've got 35.2. Let's see how fast this thing is actually turning. And if, uh, God, I should do it. Where is that sheet of paper? There it is. <laughs> Thank God, because I've, I've got the other one uh, uh, folded over. So I'm just going to write this down uh, so that I, I, I don't forget it. <laughs> the total for our moment of inertia is 297.2 kilogram meters squared. All right, couldn't really fight that. 297, you can remember from the last one, kilogram meters squared. So we know what I is, we know I omega. Let's look at number two and see how fast this thing is actually turning. So if the energy that we have is 35.92 times 10 to the six joules, right? and we know what I is, and we know two, can't we say that omega equals, and I'm just gonna put some brackets here so we can uh, see how it all works out, two times the energy of rotation, two times 35.2 times 10 to the six joules, right? I'll, put, I'll definitely put my units in my equation. <laughs> Right, so two times the energy divided by the moment of inertia, which is 297.2 kilogram meters squared. There you go. Anybody uh, who was wondering what those were now sees me use it in the equation, so they, they won't have a question. Uh, and I've got to take that to the square root, right? 
And of course, the square root is just to the 0.5. Uh, the square is to the two, so the square root would be to the 0.5. I'm sure everybody knows that. If you didn't, I, you know, where did you first learn that? That's the interesting question, isn't it? So let's do this. So two times 35.2 to the sixth divided by 297.2 and then taken to the square root gives me 486.7. And what would my units be? Omega. Omega is 486.7 radians per second, right? I'm just going to give you that in RPM as well, so times 60 divided by two, divided by pi, oh, wait, no, that's, yeah, that's right, uh, 4,647 RPM, all right? And I'll just take my little separator thing there and draw like that, there you go. So, but that's not what we're interested in anyway. What we're really interested in is how fast it's turning right here, right? And that's quite high. We've got that thing spinning uh, at, uh, you know, 46, 47 RPM. Or if you think about it, if we divide radians by 57 uh, or by two pi, right? Uh, that thing is rotating incredibly fast. I'd be dividing this by 3,600, so it's like one point one and a half times per, per second. Let's see, how many? No, way, way more than that. Um, anyway, radi I've got the radians, uh, and we know that there's two pi radians, or about 6.28, so it's about eh, 75, 75 revolutions per second. That's pretty fast. Um, anyway, so we now know what's happening at two. Let's go on. Uh, all right, so the next one we wanna to come to is A. We're coming up this slope. It's a 50 meter high slope. I know that I can't go less than uh, point uh, where have I got three meters per second? So let's put that in there. That's a qualifier, isn't it? So I can't go less than three meters per second. Am I even going that high? Let's say that I was to shift uh, all of my kinetic energy into potential energy. How high would that get me? How high would that get me? Wouldn't that be four times 10 to the six? Because we know that uh, potential energy is just MGH, right? MGH, and we know the energy. So if we wanted to know what the height is, it'd just be the energy divided by mass times the gravitational attraction, right? How high it would actually get me. So the height, that I could go with that four million joules of energy. You know, I've got space, why don't I put joules? How high could I go? That would be four times 10 to the six joules divided by, right? M times G, so 20,000 kilograms. I'm just doing this. I already know the answer of this already, of course, but you don't. So uh, times 9.81 meters per second squared. And yes, I always like to put my units in there, even though sometimes, uh, you know, it means it takes more time. So 4 million divided by 20 thou oops, wait a second. Sorry. 4 million divided by 20,000 divided by 9.81 gives me 20.387. So 20.39 meters. That's not gonna do it, is it? That's only taking us tw up 20.39 meters. 
So we, we, the, we you know, our kinetic energy, we, we can't go down to that. We can't because the minimum kinetic energy that we can have uh, would be for a velocity of three meters per second. So let's do that. <clears throat> so kinetic energy minimum equals one half m times three meters per second squared. What is that? Well, 20,000 times one half times three meters squared. Three squared times 20,000 times one half is 90,000. So we know that we have to have 90 times 10 to the three joules there all the time, right? 90,000 joules. <clears throat> so I've got 90,000 joules there. And that 90,000 joules, so that means that the only thing that I really have to use is the, the four kilograms here. I've got it, or three point uh, nine. Anyway, you know what I mean. Uh, Four million minus 90,000. But, but I'm going to take all of that, all of that uh, 3.6, and I'm going to have to take some of this too, aren't I? Because I'm going to have that, and I know that my potential energy now I'm up to 50 meters. So let's look at what our potential energy is. That would be the mass times the gravitational constant, right? I should put a, uh, a yeah, let's do that. Uh, the mass times the gravitational constant times the height. So that's pretty easy. That's just 20,000 times 9.81 meters per second squared times 50 meters. And that says that I have 9.81. 9.81 times 10 to the 6. And so what is left over then in my um, rotational energy in the flywheel? So as I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to actually access the flywheel to get up to point A and keep my velocity at uh, 3 meters per second as I go through the station at A. And I also know that I'm up here, so I've got some of my potential energy back, and that's going to, of course, subtract from the overall total kinetic energy uh, that we have. So, so let's do that. So I have 35.2 minus 9.81, you know, million uh, minus 90,000. And that leaves me with 25.3. 25.3 times 10 to the six. So there you go, we still have plenty of energy in reserve. We started off at the 200, we've come up there. We're now at point A, right? So we've, we've, we've done this, we've now done point A. We, we've of course done number one. Now what we wanna do, I. Uh, and we haven't really finished uh, all of A, we've finished out all of the things here, but what we'd want to do is we'd want to find out what is omega, right, for the thing here. It's going to be less, much less. Everybody, I can, I think, I'm not going to do that again, but I think everybody could do that. We've already figured out that this is the kinetic energy for three meters per second, and we know that this is the potential energy. You know, why don't we do this uh, at A? So it's just going to be two, right, times 25.2 times 10 to the six joules, all divided by 297.2 kilogram meters squared. Taken to the one half, two times 25.2 exponent six, divided by 297.2 equals squared. Oh, not squared. <laughs> um, 
square root. There we go, 411. Uh, 0.8 radians per second. So you can see that it didn't slow it down uh, all that much. And I'm thinking to myself, is that, is that two times then that that's 50? Divided by, so yeah, um, yeah, that's 35. So yes, I, that, that, that looks about right. Uh, so I'll go with that. All right. Um, when I did this, because I had those mistakes early in that first lecture, I didn't redo all of these. So we're actually doing them uh, as we speak, although I do have some of them uh, already written down and stuff. So now we're at three. And at three, we want to go 20 meters per second again, don't we? So we know what that is. So at three, we're going to put down four times 10 to the six joules you know, at four, when we get up to four, we're going to want to be going four times 10 to the six joules. And then at five, way out here, we're going to be going four times 10 to the six joules there too, right? So we know what our kinetic energy is. You know, at C, we also know that our kinetic energy, our uh, potential energy is going to be zero right? Zero here at two, zero here at, 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 at C. We also know when, when we go to four, our potential energy is going to go up, both at B and at four, we're going to have a potential energy that is, uh, you know, much higher. You know, at three, we, we have a uh, potential energy that's 9.81 times 10 to the six joules. At B, we're going to be 50 higher. So we're basically just going to double this, aren't we? So instead of uh, 98, we're going to have 19.6 times 10 to the 6 joules. At B and at 4, 19.6 times 10 to the 6 joules. At C, we have 0. And at 5, we have 0 joules. Right, so we filled out our table quite quite a bit here. Is there anything else we can find out? Yeah, here at four. Look at that, at four, we're back to uh, our potential energy is that. Our kinetic energy has to be this, so we can quickly figure out what our rotational energy is going to be because the total overall energy is 39.2, right? So 39.2, um, minus four minus 19.6 equals 15.6, right? Okay, that's what our rotational energy is going to be at four. Uh, at B, if we're going from there, again, we can't use, uh, you know, right here, 9.81, this would be at three. Uh, we can't go higher than the thing. So, so at A, we were going uh, relatively slow. At B, we we're going back up to our 20 meters per second or 45 miles per hour. We know this, so we can easily figure out, uh, you know, what, uh, what that is. So 39.2 minus 4 minus 9.81 is 25.39. Wait, wait, wait a second. No, it's, what did I do there? Uh, if I got that right, let's see, 30, let me just do this. 39.2 minus 9.81 minus... Point nine. Oh wait. Point oh nine. Oh, that's twenty nine point three. Is that right? That's about nine. No, 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 no. It's. Oh, I was taking it off the thirty. The thirty five for some reason. Why? Why did I do that? I don't know. 
I don't know. Let's do this again. 39.2 minus. I know you guys probably saw it and you're like, hey, what's he doing? Um, 39.2 minus 9.81 minus 0.09, 29.3. So this is a nine. Uh, that's, that's not very well, but anyway, 29. Point three. Uh, later on, I'll, I'll change that. Um, and then coming down here, so that would change this a little bit because uh, I'm going to take another three point. Uh, anyway, let's just, <laughs> let's just do it. 39.2 minus 9.81 minus 4 gives me 25.39. 25.39. Nine times ten to the six, and so there's our twenty-five point three nine at at three. Uh, we go down to the next one at, at B. We're climbing up again, so we're at the next highest one. Uh, we're going to lose all of that four times ten to the six uh, things as we knew before, right? So we lose all of that, and we have to take some out of here too. So we know that we're going to be going ninety or, or three meters per second when we go through station B. Both of those two stations, we want to be going slowly as we go through there. So 90 times 10 to the three joules as we go through there. And that then tells us what's left inside our rotational energy, 39.2 minus 19.6 minus 0.09 is 19.51. 19.51 times 10 to the 6 joules. See how I'm filling this all out? Now we're back down to zero because we shot back down there. Uh, right at point C, we're going to be going as fast as we, we possibly can, right? And then we're going to slow it down. So how fast would we be going if all of this was in there and I just, if I changed all of the potential energy from 100 meters, I'm just gonna keep this the same, right? I'm gonna keep this uh, the, the, the same. Uh, so that's gonna be 15.6 times 10 to the six. Why would I add? Why would I add this rotational energy in the flywheel when I'm going downhill? I mean, I'm going from here to here right? And in fact, that's going to increase the uh, speed that I'm going to have because now I've got 19.6 and I've got uh, 4, so that gives me 23.6 times 10 to the 6 joules. So that's what I want to look at now is at point C. At point C, how fast are we going, right? So remember that for potential energy or kinetic energy, it's one half mv squared, right? So v, we're gonna take something to the square root. So we've got two times e divided by m. So two times e, and e here at point c is 23.6 times 10 to the six joules, right? Uh, so two, um, E divided by M, M is 20,000 kilograms, all taken to the square root. And that's going to tell us what is this maximum velocity that this crazy train driver is uh, using, uh, you know, for that last 100 meters so he can get into the yard. Actually, he's gonna have to slow down to 20 meters per second to, you know, when he gets close to the yard because <clears throat> his supervisor is going to be around and he's going to be watching <laughs> how fast he goes. Let's hope he gets around the corner at this speed. So let's see uh, what that speed is. So two times 23.6 million divided by 20,000 taken to the square root is 48.5. 5.8 meters per second. Well, 
what do we know? How, how do we change meters per second into miles per hour, right? Isn't it uh, uh, 3,600 divided by 1609? And that gives me 108.7 miles per hour, right? So after he's coming down here, he's at, at point C, he's going 108.7 miles per hour. That's the fastest that he gets on the whole route because then he's got to bring it back down to 45 miles an hour when he gets over here because he's got to cut that more than in half, doesn't he? down to 20 meters per second when he goes into the shop. And so when he does get into the shop, he's still going to have 35.2 times 10 to the six joules waiting, you know, waiting for them. In fact, he's gonna slow this down to nothing and he's going to end up with still the same 39.2, right? And can they use that to drive themselves back up the hill? Yes, they can, if there were no losses, but there are. Right, and that's what I want to put down here is that in reality, um, efficiency does not equal one. So we're going to be losing stuff all through here. There's going to be air resistance. There's going to be bearing re uh, resistance. There's going to be tra track, uh, you know, roughness resistance. So there's always uh, losses that are occurring. Here we're talking about theory, uh, but you know, out there it's reality. All right, this is uh, the second lecture, and this is more on our, our energy analysis of this flywheel. And as you could see. The flywheel at the highest is only getting up to about 5,000 RPM, which is uh, not that bad. Even though it's a huge <laughs> flywheel, it still is only going about 5,000 RPM. And that, uh, you know, that that's fine. I mean, we can make a lot of things that are, would, I mean, maybe not 10,000, you know, kilograms per cubic meter density, but we can make a lot of things that would work like this. And for light rail, this is a, a great idea. If you could do it to every car, every car have a flywheel designed like this. Um, think of the amount of energy that you would save. And of course, this is what they were thinking when they took a, you know, the British buses and they put the flywheels underneath them. Um, those weren't really 20,000 kilograms though, right? So we'll have to, you know, Anyway, uh, see you at the next lecture. <clears throat> I've done a, uh, like, <laughs> done like, anyway, I'll see you at the next lecture. I, I don't know uh, if I'll do another lecture today, maybe tomorrow. My throat's a uh, little sore. That was the only lecture I've had, ever had to throw away in all the lectures that I've done though. So uh, that was, uh, that's good. I hope I, I never have to throw another one away. See you then. <laughs>